Thank you all. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Today, America honors 29 Native Americans who, in a desperate hour, gave their country a service only they could give. In war, using their native language, they relayed sacred, secret messages that turned the course of battle. At home, they carried for decades the secret of their own heroism. Today, we give these exceptional Marines the recognition they earned so long ago. I want to thank the Congress for inviting me here, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank Senators Campbell, Bingham, and Johnson, and Congressman Udall for their leadership. I want to thank Sergeant Major McMichael, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Washington, D.C. The gentlemen with us, John Brown, Chester Nez, Lloyd Oliver, Alan Dale June, and Joe Palmer, represented by his son Kermit, are the last of the original Navajo Code Talkers. In presenting gold medals to each of them, the Congress recognizes their individual service, bravely offered and flawlessly performed. With silver medals, we also honor the dozens more who served later with the same courage and distinction. And with all these honors, America pays tribute to the tradition and community that produced such men, the great Navajo Nation. The paintings in this rotunda tell of America and its rise as a nation. Among them are images of the first Europeans to reach the coast and the first explorer to come upon the Mississippi. But before all these firsts on this continent, there were the first people. They're depicted in the background as if extras in the story. Yet their own presence here in America predates all human record. Before others arrived, the story was theirs alone. Today we mark a moment of shared history and shared victory. We recall a story that all Americans can celebrate and every American should know. It is a story of ancient people called to serve in a modern war. It is a story of one unbreakable oral code of the Second World War. Messages traveling by field radio on Iwo Jima and the very language heard across the Colorado Plateau centuries ago. Above all is the story of young Navajos who brought honor to their nation and victory to their country. Some of the code talkers were very young, like Albert Smith, who joined the Marines at 15. In order to enlist, he said he, I had to advance my age a little bit. At least one code talker was over age, so he claimed to be younger in order to serve. On active duty, their value was so great and their order so sensitive that they were closely guarded. By war's end, some 400 Navajos had served as code talkers. 13 were killed in action, and their names, too, are on today's Roll of Honor. Regardless of circumstances, regardless of history, they came forward to serve America. The Navajo Code itself provides part of the reason. Late in his life, Albert Smith explained the code word for America was our mother. Our mother stood for freedom, our religion, our ways of life, and that's why we went in. The Code Talkers joined 44,000 Native Americans who wore the uniform in World War II. More than 12,000 Native Americans fought in World War I. Thousands more served in Korea, Vietnam, and served to this very day. 24 Native Americans have earned the highest military distinction of all, the Medal of Honor, including Ernest Childers, who was my guest at the White House last week. 
in all these wars and conflicts, Native Americans have served with the modesty and strength and quiet valor that their tradition has always inspired. That tradition found full expression in the code talkers, in those absent, and in those with us today. Gentlemen, your service inspires the respect and admiration of all Americans. And our gratitude is expressed for all time in the medals it is now my honor to present. May God bless you all. Would the uh, four honorable code talkers please come forward? Ladies and gentlemen, please join me now in welcoming and honoring one man who will speak for the Code Talkers, Mr. John Brown, Jr. It is indeed an honor to be here today before you representing my fellow distinguished Navajo Code Talkers. Only destiny has demand my presence here, for we must never forget that these such events are made possible only by the ultimate sacrifice of thousands of American men and women, who I am certain are watching us now. And yes, it is fitting, too, here in the Capitol Rotunda, such a historic place where so many heroes have been honored. I am proud that the Navajo Code Talkers today join the ranks of these great Americans. I'd like to especially thank Senator Benman and all the work that he has given to make this occasion possible to recognize the code talker.
I enlisted in the Marine Corps 1942, not to become a cold talker that came later, but to defend the United States of America in the war against the Japanese emperor. My mother was afraid for my safety. So my grandfather told her to take one of my shoes, place an airhead in it, take it to the mountain called Two Little Hills and go there every day to pray that I would remain safe. Maybe she was more successful than she imagined because the Marine Corps soon asked the Navajo Marines to develop a secret code using our language. My comrade and I volunteered to become Navajo radio operators or code talkers. Our precious and sacred Navajo Diné language was bestowed upon us, we the Diné Nation, by the holy people. Our language is older than the Constitution of the United States. I'm proud that at this point in American history, our native language and the code we developed came to the aid of our country, saving American lives and helping the others, U.S. Armed Forces to ultimately defeat the enemies. Of the original 29 code talkers, there are just five of us that lives today. Chester Nance, Lord Oliver, Ellen Dale Jones, Joe Palmer, and myself. We have seen much in our lives. We have experienced war and peace. We know the value of freedom and democracy that this great nation embodies. But our experience have also shown us how fragile these things can be and how we must stay ever vigilant to protect them as court talkers, as Marines. We did our part to protect these values. It is my hope that our young people will carry on this honorable tradition as long as the grass shall grow and the water shall flow. Maybe Japan is listening. Mr. President, we four original court talkers present this day, including the families of my comrades who aren't able to be here with us, are honored to be here to receive this award. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this time I'd like to introduce uh, Father Daniel Coughlin, who's the chaplain of the United States House of Representatives. After the prayer, we would ask that uh, all would stay seated until the president uh, could greet some of the family and then be able to depart. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us today. Chaplain.
May the great peace accept the deceased members of the Code Talkers. May those living legends still with us keep this story alive. May they be blessed in their families. May the great sky which covers all and sees all our actions heal us and unite us as one. May the wind within us and the wind which surrounds everything strengthen the life, movement, thought, and communication of the Navajo people and all in this nation. May the blessing way of the Navajo continue to bring peace and unity to their native land, the United States of America. God bless America and all her native people. Amen.